Hey, before the podcast gets started, make sure to go cop some t-shirts. I'm going to take you out to the website. Uh, YouTube demonetized me, so your boy broke as fuck. So, if you want want to help support me. Hold on, let me pull this up. Oh, this is Stu's site. You can fuck with Stu too, but let me let me show you mine first. I'm the priority here, motherfucker. This is my shit. All right, so you got the game time tee, game time on the front, oversized tee, tee macho on the back. You got the I'm not a fucking scientist. I'm not, I'm not supposed to curse in the first minute, but fuck it. I'm already demonetized, niggas. <laughs> Facts. So, yeah, I'm not a fucking scientist. I'm a bodybuilder. Yeah, so whatever you want to fuck with, fuck with it. If you don't want to fuck with it, that's okay, too. All right. <laughs> so yeah, like if you want, hey, if you don't even support me, if you support Kane, if you like dogs, if you want Kane to keep stay on his diet, you know what I'm saying, keep getting brolic, keep getting buff, fuck with some t-shirts, all right. If not, Kane gonna be hungry. I, I'll, I'll put the camera on him, but he's sleeping right now. They don't. That, that's why I said buff. I'm like they don't know what brolic mean. If you're not from New York, you probably don't know. But anyway, support Stu as well, because he do this podcast. And I like to support my friend's business. I like everybody else who go rock Gucci and all that shit. I rock with my with my boys. So go right go cop Stu stuff, beefstew.net. He got the Fear the Fro shirt. That's my favorite right there. Fear the Fro Stu. And then he got this serious bodybuilder one, beef stew with the abs and thighs. Oh, he cheaper than mine. His is twenty eight dollars. Damn, I got I got to drop my rate, but I got to match that rate. I'm gonna first cop my shit. But anyways, I don't want to make this too long. T Macho that shop and beefstew.net. Fuck with your boys. Enjoy the episode, ladies and. Gentlemen. You guys know each other? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I don't yeah. know if we actually ever talked, Brett, but uh, like like face to face. But yeah, we, we we message on Instagram all the time. Yeah. It, it's funny because technically I, I've known Brett for a long time. I've known of him, and we had the same coach and we had the same friends, but we never actually like talked right. to him. Either. <laughs> we would just put like pass by, like in. in but uh, the first time we actually talked, I think it was this year at the at the cow, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, this year at the Cal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's funny because obviously I, I didn't know you either, body. And then I was living in Orange County for five, six years. And you guys are yeah, like yeah. Joe, all those guys are in the Norwalk area. I was always bouncing between and training. Everyone kind of trained at the same gyms. And now I'm out here, but I've, yeah, I've seen. We've all kind of been in the same circles for a while. I feel exactly. it's like I've seen you and I've known of you, but I, I don't think we we've ever talked until probably Texas, actually, right? For sure, yeah. No, I mean, that's at least in person. I don't think there's a lot of bodybuilders in California, man, that like really live it like that anymore. So I think yeah. we all gravitated to each other. But it's funny that I'd never actually met you before, and now I live in Vegas. I feel like we all know, like, if, if somebody says, oh, you know, my boyfriend is a bodybuilder, my friend is a... I'm like, and they, and they might say a name. I'm like, I don't know the name, but I'm sure if you show me, I, I, right. I'm i pretty sure I probably know who it is, right? Because we all know of each other, even if we don't know each other personally. So if you show me... I think oh, yeah. kind of a wild concept. I um, met Carlos in Vegas at the Olympia. At the like meet and greet, I ran into Carlos and I'm like, "Hey, Carlos!" And I just like chatted up with him, and he's like, "Oh yeah, you did USA's in the North Americans." And I was like, "How the hell did you know?" <laughs> and he's like, "Well, from the podcast." We all and know, yeah. Like, what? Like I was, you know, I don't think anybody pays attention, especially to me. <laughs> I'm just like some, you know, to me, I'm just a Joe schmo. Yeah. I mean, the truth is, we, we all we all know each other to or, or, or heard of each other. Like I've been knowing, being from the East Coast, I've been knowing of Carlos probably before, and, and same with Nick before they were talked about. Right, like they weren't like popular people, 
but we all knew of them for the most part, you know, shit. The, the time I started, I, I probably started following them way before they turned pro. I, I actually had, I don't know if I had, I had Nick on a podcast long before he turned pro on the, not this podcast. I had like a podcast before this. And I, I want to say I had Carlos on before too, but I'm not, I'm not sure on that one, but it, it's basically like we literally all know each other. Is he going to listen? What's up, y'all? What's up? Yeah, hey, let's go. Going? You still on your rebound, Eddie? Uh, man, I look too good. Like, my body hurts, but fuck you, man. I look good. Let's do it. When, <laughs> <laughs> when, 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 did you, uh, when did you compete? Okay, so August fucking 11th or 10th or something like that was a Texas Pro. And then I hung on for two more weeks to that guest closing. And then I hung on for two more weeks till September 2nd. And mm. then, I don't know, like, it, it, I know there's uh, some dudes that competed in the RGV Classic that I guess posed that. Yeah. They're six weeks post-show. So, I okay, guess okay. I'm around five or six weeks. Like, it's been five or six weeks, like, legit pushing. But they haven't been, it, it hasn't been uh, crazy long. Yeah. Not too long. Char it feels like it, though. And then Ch Char Charles competed, shit, how long ago? Not that long, what, two weeks? Yeah, I'm just coming out of it, man. I was doing, I did back-to-back -back shows. So, I did the, the Legions. That was uh, September 28th. And then uh, I did the Amateur Olympia when you guys were all here for the yeah so you're you're uh doing your rebound as well yeah no, we just we just started the rebound program it's my favorite part of the whole process man that's it's the funnest hey you know what what's good brady hey what up what up what up what's going on, bro? Uh, the rebound used to be the rebound used to be my favorite part because you know you're full you're strong everything but now, nowadays i just get tired bro i just get sleepy you know i kind of feel a little shit okay so so look today so yeah. day I woke up and I was like, I'm not eating today. Like I can't fucking get shit done. I don't want to do my laundry. I don't want to clean. I don't want to do anything because I'm so bogged down. So yeah. I did my fasted workout and then afterwards I just drank an energy drink and up until noon I just got shit done. And then I just maxed out the one twenties for five reps, which is a PR for me. Bro. I've been seeing that shit. I'm like, yo, that, that's like that's like us lifting like 280 pound dumbbells. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know you're on that weight around on a press. <laughs> that's crazy. See, well, no. I'm not I'm not plateauing, so why would I? You know, like my strength is just wait. What what weight, do, what weight do you compete at, Alyssa? Uh, Texas Pro, I would say 131. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? <laughs> That's great. That would be like us literally pressing like what 250, 250 pound dumbbells. <laughs> I, weigh, I weigh 153, 154 right now, and I feel like a fat fuck. You yeah, know, that, no, that, that, that's wild. I mean, I guess five foot. People say I was measured one time at a show like five one or five two. Uh, I, guess I, don't care, I don't care what you measured once. I'm asking you how tall you are. <laughs> I say 5'1". I, I, I say 5'1". When, when I was in class, oh. I used to, uh, people be like, how tall are you? would be like, 5'9 and a half, maybe. Like <laughs> it, depends. It, it, it depends. <laughs> uh, right, so, uh, so, Charles, about how do you how do you handle your, your rebound? Do you uh, do you bring the food up fast or, or soup, like, really slow? Honestly, man... Um, I've owned, this is my third time rebound. It's my third season, and I've been with my oh. coach AJ for those three years. And we just we always hit it aggressive out of the gate, and that's where we've made our best progress the last two years. So I mean, we we <laughs> race fast, and you and you feel <laughs> fine. You don't feel like laying in bed all day. I I mean, honestly, bro, my my body is a machine when it comes to carbohydrates. So. Okay. Uh, my ba like, of course, I get sleepy, but it's, I, I feel pretty energized. Honestly, I'm I'm feeling pretty good right now. I'm keeping it tight in the waist and mm -hmm. just putting putting weight on fast, but just kind of cruising. Are you somebody who has to go really low carbs in prep or no? Not at all. Maybe, maybe that's it. Maybe if you go to really low carbs and then all of a sudden your carbs are high, that shit. Right, well, that makes more sense. I, th I mean, if you really think about it, my 
except for the last couple weeks going into the show, like coming out now, I'm only two weeks post show. So I think I have a couple of menus, but on my base menu is already higher than what I was going into off season or finishing off season going to prep. Like my, my rice meal is already bigger. So okay, it's just okay. like the, the amount that it's going to go up this year to, to grow is going to be ridiculous. Crazy. I got to be honest, like this, uh, same way, I think uh, Alyssa felt the same. But this rebound, man, I felt like shit. I felt, I felt horrible. I, I, I looked, I, I liked how I looked, I guess, but the, I was just, I was tired, bro. I was just, but I, I think, didn't want to do anything. It's our bro. own fault. So, like, I pulled back on cardio. I pulled back on I did too, yeah, okay. Like, you see how I, I eat like a fucking, I eat like Joe. But it's just like, that's you probably gear a lot to do. Huh? Did you pull gear out? Pulled orals. And I pretty much doubled my primo just for the past month. And I've just been fucking pushing this HDA that Booth told me about. Ooh, I still okay, said, okay. So, like, but the thing, yeah, so I'm just <laughs> honestly blasting a fuck ton of HDH. And, <laughs> but Sorry. I'm honestly not able to reach. I can't really ping. Like, my shots are getting sketchier and sketchier so like i'm just naturally getting to the point where i don't want to do anymore so i'm not yeah that, that, what? That. Mm -hmm. what was that brady dude just popped back in looking crazy <laughs> crazy Jensen, really quick i'll be back in like five minutes okay guys sorry no, right, it's not yeah. okay that's why I'm talking talking. <laughs> but okay no, but, but like i think the hgh has a lot to do with it uh i don't know about the tiredness it's probably my diet and lack of cardio and just being a lazy fuck, but I'll say this too, though. I mean, like high dose GH can make you pretty sleepy. Absolutely, but, you know. And then honestly, high gear in general on the rebound makes you feel like shit. I'm not gonna lie. I was I was trying to push the gear a little higher than usual in the, in the rebound, and I was like, nah, fuck that, and I had to go back down. <laughs> it just, it's just, it's not the, it's not the right timing for that. You know, I just, down, I just had some primo left over, so I was like, I'll just get rid of this primo when it's gone. I'll take a break. <laughs> I mean, body, I think that's more it than anything that, like you said, the food so. and the training. It's when you when you go from not having any test in your body, like competing two weeks in a row, and yeah, yeah. pulling it a few weeks before that, like it's just that surge of you know eight hundred to a gram of test coming in, and you put the it's GH much. back in. I mean, I do G GH is only at night for me. I try to avoid it in the morning, but like when I would do in the morning or pre workout before, I would I would be way more tired than yeah. doing it all at night. That's I don't know why I never thought of doing that though. Like, cause I'm, I I I'll fall asleep on the way to the gym for real. Yeah, yeah. Bro, all the time. Sometimes you pull up to the gym and you take a, you take like a 30, 30 minute nap in the car, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's, this shit is crazy. That's that's crap on, on high growth too. Fuck. Oh, that's the yeah, it, it's damn. I feel uh, like getting, I can never price. wake up. Like, all day long, I can't wake up no matter how much caffeine I take. Like, I just can't. I'm it's really you wake up. Those. Yeah. I, I know what you mean. Like, to, to get that real alert feeling? Uh, no. Nah, Until I mean. today, when, like, today was the first time I felt awake, like, because I fasted. And mm -hmm. I was like, damn, I can feel my muscles again. Like, maybe I'm just completely spilled over. But <laughs> I know I'm in a surplus trying to grow. But now, that's I where my thing What's up? Oh, my fault. I was going to say, uh, right now, being off, I guess, like four weeks, this is my sweet spot. I feel really good right now, four weeks off. Now, you get to, by the time you get to like seven weeks out, seven weeks off of gear, ah, you start to, your recovery starts to go a little bit down. And like Maybe like six weeks or so five weeks. But right now, uh, I'll say from two weeks, two weeks off gear to like four weeks off gear, the gear is still kind of in your system a little bit. I like less, but less saturated, but just enough that you don't feel like, sh you know, you don't feel like shit or you don't feel, you know, so right now I feel alert. I actually want to get some work done. I dropped like, I don't know, like five pounds of water weight, you know, so I'm, 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 I'm kind of chilling. Off, off? Like off, off or? Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. I was on the road off, off. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm on two in the test, but. I actually keep the the. I learned this from uh from Stu actually. I keep the GH in there. I used to yeah. drop the GH down to two IUs, but now I keep that bitch yeah, ten, ten IUs. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's. Yeah. I made some of my best progress last year during off season TRT. Well, three hundred three hundred tests and and high GH. 
I mean, I, I don't, I don't get any side effects from GH. I, 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 I would, I would try doing it all before bed and see if you notice a difference. That, that was when I really started to grow. We did when I started before all of it before bed. Yep. I'm, I, I'm gonna try it out. I, I usually do like half in the morning, half at night, but That's I do, right, I yeah. do get sleep. Are, are I, you I too, know. Alyssa? Yeah, I do like I'm. I'm doing a lot. I can't lie, but hey, I do nice. it in the morning, and then I because honestly, my nighttime <laughs> like when I go to bed at night, it's just like a really long nap because I wake up multiple times to pee, so I don't feel like it's a uh, nighttime sleep for me. So like once I wake up and do my AM workout, and then I come back home and eat, then I really knock out and pass out. So. I, I don't know. I think it's just in there. It's going to work no matter what. But right. I think at nighttime is probably more beneficial, in my opinion. Did you say you, did you, say you take it before you train fasted? Mm. I'm sorry. I think I'm a certain. certain. I take it in the morning, yes. And I do train fasted, yes. So, yes. Wait, so, you take you take your, your high-dose uh, high GH before you train fasted? You don't crash like crazy? I don't ever crash. I always, I'm like always, I'm saturated as fuck. Let's just put it like that. (laughs) When I wake up, yeah, like I ate fucking four tacos and and three cookies (laughs) from insomnia last night. So when I wake up, like, (laughs) yeah, that's a good point. Always full of food. I do that sometimes. Like in the past, I've, uh, I've, I've trained fasted and I would pin the GHP workout. You actually get like a pretty crazy pump. As long as as long as you're you're saturated from the night before, you don't want to be you, know, you don't want to be like low. It's, it's, it's funny, bro, because like unless you do stuff so like different, so your way though. But the thing is though, is you have such sound reasoning, scientific facts behind like everything. Like it's like everything you say. Like at first, like I'm always like, wait, how? And then like you just kind of like it all just coincides with each other perfectly. I know, and I was listening to, like, all the, the Jeff Nipper stuff that's been going on and all the scientific, like, I'm completely opposite of scientific because I got into bodybuilding because I didn't want to go to school. So the harder you make it, the less I want to do it. And the dumber mm-hmm. it sounds and the easier it is from my, like, I just know, and I can't explain other than I know instinctively what I need to do. Like, this morning yes. I woke up and I said, it's time to fast. Like, I just know, and I don't know how else to explain it. But it works, and I mean, you see how I'm looking. I don't think I'm soft from the back, but no, I no, still you, think you're not in right now, right? You're in shape. No, I'm in rebound right now. Right? Exactly. <laughs> Who gives a fuck if you're soft, man? <laughs> I, I do mean, because realistically, I don't want myself to get too soft from the back because the back is what needs to be harder than showing. Sure. Yeah, I do get yeah. that much. For sure. But I still yeah. I still see lines on the side of my glutes. They're very faint, but they're there. And again, from the rear, I'm still I'm massing up. So I know I know once gear is put back in, like I'm not running a lot of gear right now, in my opinion. So once I do once I take a break and then I'm resensitized and I throw some windstrong anovar back in the mix, it just falls off. Like it, yeah. my glutes will get lean. I just need my back to stay lean because I can't let my back get fatter. Or thicker skinned because that's what Tyler said needs to get leaner next showing. I need a leaner backside. So oh. yeah, yeah, that's why. Yeah, I'm I mean, main gaining. I'm main gaining. <laughs> main, main gaining. The the best coaches in the world. They're. I mean, they they have some kind of sound. They they understand the science, but they don't. I mean, they don't really use the science. They use experience. You know. There's 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 science that's like. That involved in it. Based on basic, like, like just basic science, not 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 no fucking like like a uh, chemist background type shit. Just just some sound sound science, you know. Literally, and the basics is really where you go off of, especially as a coach. I mean, I'm sure you probably exactly experienced this like pretty. You know, I mean, you have a decent amount of clients, right? Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yes. Yeah, it's, it's like. <laughs> You ever had like somebody that's kind of stuck, and you kind of relook at their plan, and you just kind of take it back down to bare bones? Oh yeah, for, for, and then sure, next thing you know, sure. it works. It's like every time you go, go back to the stuff that you learned when you were sixteen. Yeah, yeah. Shit. It's like uh, uh, Chris is, Chris Cito said something once. He was like, "When you keep pushing and something isn't working, or you keep pulling and something isn't working, it's usually the opposite you got to do, right?" 
right. and that 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 made a lot of sense, right? If somebody says, "Yo, um, I want to get my arms bigger," they're not growing. What do you do? Whatever they tell you is really the opposite. If they tell you, "Well, I train arms every day," you're gonna be like, "Maybe don't train that shit every day. Maybe train it twice a week, <laughs> motherfucker." Or <laughs> if they tell you, "I train it once a week," maybe like try it twice a week. Just is usually the opposite of, of what you're doing. So if you've been pushing cardio, pulling car, pushing cardio, and motherfucker can't can't lose weight, you might need to back off of cardio and give them more food for a couple of days. And, and before pulling again, you know what I'm saying? So sometimes like that's that's not necessarily science. I'm, I'm sure there's a way you could explain that in a way that sounds a lot smarter than that. But it's really instinct. Just doing it for a long time, you kind of know these things. Like that person's body is stressed. Pull that shit back. Give them some rest. And they, they'll start to respond. Uh, a lot of inflammation. If you're doing two hours of cardio, that's a lot of fucking trauma to your body. So you might need to rest. They'll drop some water. They'll look better. You know what I'm saying? And, and bodybuilding, close to the show... A nap and sleep can fix anything. You look like shit. Go go to go to go to sleep, motherfucker. We wake up dry as fuck. <laughs> you know. I, I feel like the best coaches go off intuition. I mean, one of my favorite quotes is: "Bodybuilding doesn't always make sense on paper." Like I eat cake and frosted rice krispies, and I'm one of the most peeled guys on stage usually. There you go. You know I mean, uh, I eat that, that's something. Huh. I was eating muffins into the show, like literally yeah. just muffins. Like, yeah. but it's all relative to what you do going into a prep. I believe absolutely, it's all sure. year long. Hey, Stu, can you hear us? Let's see if we can hear you. Yeah, it's a little low. Is it a little low? Do y'all hear me? We got sound. This is good. yeah. This we got sound. Good start. <laughs> it's good progress. Um, Stu, are you in a peak off season yet? Oh, there you go. Perfect. I'm good. Yeah, you're good to go. Do my hear my buttery voice. Um, no, not right. not peak, not peak. But honestly, I've been kind of a shit bodybuilder recently because we were in Vegas and I just got back from Portland yesterday, and we're we're leaving for Texas in uh, ten days, yeah. ten or eleven days. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I actually met up with Blue down in Portland. He was, I just told him, I was like, listen, man, I'm going to be a piece of shit for the next couple of weeks. And then when I get settled, uh, I'll fix that. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, hey, to be honest, yeah, it, I feel like your body is going to bounce right back anyway. I mean, last time I saw you, you didn't look like you visually, you don't look like you missed the beat. You, you look like where, where you're supposed to look, you know? A lot of beats. Yeah, this hasn't been a great <laughs> off season so far. Yeah. Mostly, you know, some of it's circumstance, but mostly my fault. So, um, yeah, you know, once I get settled down south, I'll be better. You're going to be in Texas for the Nationals, right? Yeah, yeah. I get okay. down there on November 8th. All right. More than likely, we're going to go out there for the Nationals. Sick. Sure. What's like the date? The December 2nd? Oh, no, it's later know. than December 2nd, I think. It's the next week. December 10th. Um, Thank I, you. I don't even know. Yeah, I think it's Paul, the eight. Something like that. Paul Paul usually handles the those kind of stuff with the booking <laughs> and stuff. I don't I don't get involved with the, with the, with the booking. Wouldn't I'm trust you with it. it. Oh, yeah. Really. <laughs> <laughs> but Paul, Paul always gets the nicest room. He gets the room with the big-ass bed and the TV <laughs> and the nice-ass. They got the bidet. I'm like, damn, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, boy, you play him the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't we, we, don't, we don't say shit. We just he's like, get he's like your chaperone at, at camp, you know? He's like <laughs> looking after you kids. Yeah, That's Paul, Paul is like, uh, I don't even know how. Paul has got to be like, well, 44 maybe. I don't know. That's, like that's team, the manager, team manager. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he's a manager. He don't even well, do podcasts no more. He just manages. I'll message him podcast. about the Airbnb. All right, but, but yeah, we gonna pull up. And Paul, Paul's, Paul's been taking care of Joe for years, man. That was I did my yeah, I did my show with Joe. He was always right by his side. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to be to be honest, I mean, he's the one that that got him where you know where he is. If I'm being completely honest, you know what I'm saying. So, do you know anybody to, doing nationals? Yeah, yeah, we know about a handful of people. Um, uh, Zay's friend is doing it. Um, I have I, I forget his name. People, people in the industry that we know, you know, not not close, not close. <laughs> people, we that we see around the way they doing the show. 
But yeah, we're going to be there should support. And then uh, my, uh, Michael invited us, so we, we got to pull up. If you give us the invite, we're going to pull up. So I, I don't know if he was serious, but we're going to pull up to his crib. Like, hey, you told us you told us come by anytime. I, I always come by. <laughs> At this point, like... I, oh, there you go. You know, mm-hmm. like, they're, they're all, everybody there is always my people. Yeah, yeah. And, like, MJ at the end of the day just wants the house full of people's bellies full. That's really, you know... Simple as that, you know? Absolutely. Look at Brett. Break out the tea on. So you got to pull up, too. Break out the... Is that a gas tea you got? Oh, yeah. Brett, yeah. pull up. You got the yeah. you got the invite, too. Everybody pull One up. One day. One day I'll pull up. <laughs> I wouldn't right. wait much. Oh, yeah. but I forgot about that. Oh, if everybody wants some body work... What do, you, what do you call it? Sports massage or body work? What's the good word? I just say soft tissue therapist. Yeah. Boom. Anybody with some soft tissue work, hit up Brett if you're in the SoCal area. He'll hook you up nice. Hook you up nice. Give you a bottle of tread on the way out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's a good incentive. Happy right. <laughs> ending. That's well, a happy ending. Yeah, that's my happy ending. <laughs> <laughs> that so. Is- Better Gina Trouble Pat. I don't. That those are probably both better. Happy Good point. We don't. We don't do farm though, man. We 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 yeah. anti farm. Anti farm GHOA. Generic. <laughs> Gen- <laughs> Generic city. Generic city. Bunch of brokies. But yo, it, it it's been a, a week full of drama and bodybuilding. I, I don't know what's what's in the water, but sure you know, has, uh, man. I, I I missed Sunday. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, you keep good. It's been an entertaining okay. week. In bodybuilding. <laughs> to be honest, it's been really entertaining. Really entertaining. Now, okay, I'm a little bit torn with the with the mic situation, right? I, I kind of see. I I could. I still. I, I feel like Jeff is in the right. I, I'll say that. But I'm kind of a little torn because I could see both sides to a point. I don't feel like it was. I don't feel like Mike did that because of Jeff. I feel like he was more just tired of the whole internet shit. But it was it was an overreaction. You know, granted, but we I also didn't see the video myself and I wasn't there, so I didn't really hear anything what Jeff said. So I don't know, but I, I want to get uh, y- y'all's opinion on, on that. Shall we start with uh, with Stu? <laughs> 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 uh, Reversal point of view, uh, you shouldn't assor- assault people, uh, for mean things that have been said on the internet, uh, especially when the things said on the internet weren't even mean. It wasn't. Um, you know, that's that's not how uh, people in the real world, like the grown-up world, handle things. That's how middle school schoolers handle things. Now, some people true. don't mature past a middle school state of mind, right? Mm-hmm. So they still want to throw hands when somebody says something mean to them, okay? Mm-hmm. And they call themselves tough guys, and they end up in jail, and they end up sued. That's dumb. Mm-hmm. That's not smart. They deserve that. They that they deserve that. Um, So yeah, I mean, (laughs) uh, Jeff put out a very succinct, very polite rebuttal to um, uh, to what's this Mike's uh, you know science science based scammers short uh, saying like, hey, I've won all these natural shows and. I've set a world record in bench, and this is why I enjoy doing things my way, you know? It was like, it was very to the point. It was not an ad hominem at all. Um, you know, he didn't say anything about Mike negative. Right. And then he, he, the, the, I don't think we're really missing any context here. The guy well, just got mad, and he punched him. Like, so, like... Like, like when we started talking in group chat, I had I hadn't watched Jeff's video. I just assumed that he he said something crazy, right? Because looking I, at the video, I'm like, I, you I, would I, think, I assume, right? Like, fucking <laughs> loopy reaction like that. You would think he must have said, "Fuck your mother," <laughs> and I'll piss on your grave, and like you know something crazy like that. No, but like he he was just he's Jeff. Jeff is the nicest guy ever. He's very very succinct, very to the point. He doesn't attack your person or anything like that like he's he's like one of the good dudes in the industry i don't even agree with him on on a lot of the, the, the way he trains for example but this doesn't mean i'm gonna punch him you know <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the the video made a lot more sense before i saw jeff's video 
Because I was like, oh, oh, somebody was talking shit. They got mush. It happens. It happens all, happens all the time, baby. It, 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 nothing new. <laughs> and then, <laughs> then I saw the video. I was like, huh. He didn't He didn't say anything about Mike. He, he would just say, like, what he's done. And I was like, huh. That's interesting. So then I, I'm like, Mike probably just don't fucking like the guy. I, I'm, I don't know. He probably just don't fuck with him. <laughs> but I, I, don't I, I don't know. I don't like a lot of people. And I've never, like, felt yeah. the need to out. To outrageously start some shit. Like, I mean, granted, do I sometimes if I'm on trend, perhaps <laughs> kind of hope that perhaps they start a problem so I can be justified? Yeah, but it never happens because we're fucking grown ups. Yeah, I, 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 I was talking to Janicky all day. Hey, Janicky, uh, I don't like how you train. <laughs> I'm gonna beat you up, and I'll see you next time at the gym. <laughs> yeah. No, it's like okay, me, me and Janicky are really good friends, and we train completely different. Like I, I don't, I don't know what that has to do with anything, like personal. It's just like, I don't know. We, we, we I feel like sometimes we talk about scientific training here. Like, ah, we don't really fuck with it. But I mean, if it works for you, I don't, I don't, I just don't see how it gets physical. It's kind of strange, but everybody like, it gets everybody physical does. because he outweighs him by like a hundred pounds, and he wouldn't have done that to Eric Konevsky. You know, that's he, what he wouldn't have done that to some other big dude, right? Mm -hmm. um, well, it's, it's really Mike, fucked up, dude. I saw a video <laughs> where Mike was approached by people out of uh, Expo, and yeah, that, nothing, nothing was about that. That was Konevsky and um, what's the other guy? The dude with the I saw Joey Stacks in it. Joey Stacks, yeah. So jo Joey Stacks, he, he's friends with, with Konevsky. Well, cause yeah, no one one of the guys one of the guys at the booth said that he was gonna kill Konevsky. and then Konevsky was like, "Oh yeah, I got some I got some friends for you to kill too." And then Joey started, some shit. It was, it was kind of funny because it it was literally like a like a prank about weighing yourself. It's not even a prank. Like he'll ask you weigh, like do you mind stepping on the scale? And some people say no, and he's like, "Okay," and he walks away. But then this guy jumped out of nowhere, and it became a whole a whole thing. It was kind of kind of strange, but. I, I stepped on the scale. <laughs> yeah, he did. Yeah, he did actually. <laughs> he got me so good, dude. At the at the Arnold, he's dressed up like some Brazilian guy speaking in an accent. I had no fucking clue <laughs> it was Eric. He, yeah. he was he was good. <laughs> it, it, it's actually okay when it, so it's funny because when it started, it was supposed to be like a lighthearted video. It was like funny and like they would laugh and they would it, it, it was like a positive video. But it's somewhere along the line that. Bodybuilders that they they don't like they don't like getting weight apparently I don't fucking know why <laughs> so not now it's almost become like a negative video but you know it's if you watch some of the reactions it's super chill oh yeah that's what's up oh you know cool and then they walk away you know but then some people some people want to want to fight and some people get get really upset you know? uh, Sergio said no he said no 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 reveals this reveals a pattern of behavior with Mike it, it does yeah. you know so I, I don't know. Yeah, I'm with Sergio said no, and he was like, "That's what's up, yo. You look great, man." <laughs> he walked away. I, I think people people think that if you say no, he's gonna get mad or something. <laughs> but I mean, he can't. He's not gonna force you to weigh yourself. It's just it's a question, really. You know, I don't know. What do you think? What do you, what do you think about uh, the situation, Charles? I mean, it, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on. I feel like it's not so much. There's always two sides to a story, but I feel like the way that social media or these pages are portraying it is like they want you to pick a side and it it just makes it a, a negative environment it's like i haven't even wanted to open instagram but um as far as that specifically i mean it should never get physical I feel like you can always cause or finish things with your words but i also would like to believe that mike isn't so stupid that he would literally you know pick this guy up and chuck him on the ground on camera so, like, it makes me wonder what happened before that. I mean, I just, I don't like how it's being portrayed, all of it. Yeah. I also got to wonder, too, like, is there... Uh-oh. You cutting out a little bit. Uh-oh. Oh. You got us? Wait, uh, talk again, Brady? <laughs> talk again, Brady? Oh, damn, Brady gone. Brady, I'll, I'll be back. Uh, hey, I'll be back when I get out. When I get out the back room, oh. <laughs> I bet. I bet. <laughs> no, I, see, I, I feel like me and Paul was thinking about that. We, we was like, what would make him do that? There has to be something we didn't see, but 
I don't know. The, the only thing I heard about, uh, about the video, I didn't see the video, but uh, this guy was talking about it. Uh, Antoine, Antoine was talking about the video. He said the only thing, the only thing that sounded a little bit sus is that he said Jeff. He said Mike. The words were exchanged, but then Jeff walked towards Mike. Now I could see how Mike, uh, whatever background he I has, five. Could get, huh? Seeing a five foot five. Yeah. <laughs> Did he feel oh, yeah. <laughs> that, 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 That's my thing. That, that's not reason enough. That that now, if he walked up to him and started talking shit, fuck you. That's different. We know we know damn well Jeff Jeff didn't do that. And, and yeah, that hand behind his back, right? It was like this. So uh, there, there's no way he, he said that, you know. But even even so, even so. When you have stuff to lose, like 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 this is not like like Stu said, this is not middle school anymore. We not we not on the block, you know. We are not on the block, so you have you have shit to lose. You you can't do. Even if he literally said "fuck you," what you gonna do? At the point you're at in your life, I don't think you should respond. Like for your own good, not not for like, us. Fuck legally us. legally speaking, you can't. If he you, said you, "fuck you, fuck your mother," every all that, like Stay you back. can't do anything. Like yeah. that's not. How the world works. You say it back. You know, people you know. say mean shit, and you got to deal with it. You know, you can say mean shit back, but you can't punch him in the face. Well, what's and you can say, oh, well, back in my day, I was raised different. You're still going to see the inside of a jail cell. Don't be fucking dumb. Okay? Like, what? There's, there's no, there's, I don't care what Jeff said. If he didn't take any violent act or threatening action towards another man, like, he can't hit him. Like that's yeah. just not how it works. It's really yeah. simple. Yeah, I was gonna say Mike also works high level. Like he has some of the biggest private security credentials. I worked in executive protection. Like it's just hard to believe he would react that way. Like given his his background, he, he, he would know better, right? I, it it, it just seems mean. weird. It I, seems I, like I, a PR stunt. Honestly, it just seems like PR, but it's crazy. All of what. Well, well, today I I did see he's selling merch. <laughs> I don't know I don't know how that correlates, but, but he made a post about too. selling merch. Yeah. It was like, what did it say on it? It's like no <laughs> no no content like against me will prosper or something. <laughs> it's it, it's kind of strange. It, it's almost like it, it almost seemed like like it was he was ready for that or something. I don't know. I don't even know. Uh, maybe he wanted to push him, but he got a little hyped. And maybe he did a little too hard, <laughs> you know. Who the fuck knows? I think worst case scenario, I kind of saw him saying, "Yo, let's step outside," and then Jeff probably would step outside, and then you kind of get that W, like, "Okay, yeah, you don't want to step outside, you don't want that smoke." Okay, good, you know. He, he, picked, he picked him up like the Undertaker and tossed him. <laughs> if if I was really pissed at somebody at the gym, I would be like, "Let's go outside," right? And then a lot of guys probably wouldn't go outside because they don't want to fight you. You know, but you would want to do it off camera outside, you know, or just give him the opportunity. You know, I don't know. It, to eat to, I guess to eat his own. I think it, it just wasn't a good move. That being said, I don't believe in cancel culture. I don't think we should cancel Mike and all this shit. Um, Jeff. What? Me too, if he goes to jail. Well, <laughs> well, well, Jeff is the is really the only one that needs to handle it and i'm sure he's gonna charge his press whatever so he be you know be, he's gonna be good he's gonna get whatever he gets out of it and then the rest of us i mean i'm not mad at mike i don't really i don't really care that much you know any day i'm not gonna cancel him i i, I never bought his t-shirts to you know to begin with per se so it's nothing there's really not, nothing to cancel you know but it seems like the internet wants him canceled don't go on no podcast nothing i mean he probably won't go on the podcast for a little bit to let it cool down, but I don't. Did it matter if he's on a podcast? I don't, I don't know what that has to. I, I feel like it's just adding to the narrative of they're trying to pit, you know, science based people against hardcore bodybuilding, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, his, his comment section is, is pretty fucked. His comment section is pretty fucked. So it, it looks like Hilarious. most. It's so funny, dude. <laughs> it, it, it looks like most people are, 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 not, are not feeling him. I mean,. I mean, uh, I mean, even even if the dude said something absolutely crazy, though, like, mm -hmm. I know he pushed him, but like, it was it was kind of at the throat, like it almost looked like he was gonna try to sneak him, and it's like that's, like that's not that's kind of a bitch. That's a bitch move to me too, though. Like, if you're gonna sneak a dude, like especially a little guy that's not even looking, like at least 
if you think he's stepping to you, just step back. You know what I mean? And just kind of yeah. like, I don't know. You can make your presence known a lot. You're a big ass dude. Like, what do you mean? Just bark at the motherfucker. Like, I don't even know. <laughs> like, like yeah. he ain't gonna push him. Like, it felt like it felt like he was in his head gonna sneak him, and then thought about it, and then just yeah. kind of like pushed him open handed to the throat. I don't know. Yeah, that that. It was odd. It was odd. <laughs> I mean, he, I feel like you, you 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 could probably get the point across just by stepping to him. Like, hey, so you talking all this shit? Like, wh- what you want to do, bro? And then he'll be like, Oh, nah, I don't want, I don't want, the, I don't want the problems, big fella. And then you he, he goes, he walks away, and that's it. I, I think that, that would have been the 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 the, the like at, at, at very most that that would have been the the biggest reaction that you probably would need to do. But anyways, that's enough of that topic. Now, second topic, Quint, Quint made a video, and uh, I guess similar, similar, but maybe a little bit less to to what happened in the other situation is happening to Matt, right? Now, s- same way, um, I can see why Quint would be, be upset. I can see why Nick would be upset as well. But I think cancel culture is like, Matt is being canceled. I don't know. I don't agree with cancel culture. I also don't think he handled it the best way as well. But let's get some opinions. But you you keep on saying cancel culture. Cancel culture, the way that I understand it, is when people are blackballed and removed from the public eye for doing something that is like unacceptable according to like a tiny group of really angry people. Like social justice warriors, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. Cancel culture, it, it, it's not cancel culture when you blackball somebody for doing something actually reprehensible, you know, mm-hmm. and genuinely wrong, yeah. right? Like, mm-hmm. I don't know, punching a little guy in the throat. Yeah. That's, and I don't think that falls under the same umbrella as like, uh, you made an off-color joke five years ago, and now we're going to kick you off of a TV special or something, you know? Yeah. It's a little different. Okay. Wrong choice of words. Let me say, I don't like like the the like a dog pile effect when when every I can see more so like okay what he do. I feel like he made some bad choices for sure. Uh, I think he kind of just retired if he knew that he didn't have a passion for coaching. Instead of prepping Nick and then pulling out, he could have just said, "Yo, Nick, I, I really don't think I could do this. Maybe you should work with somebody else." Right? That would be the better move. So he did fuck up with that. He fucked up with Quint. You know, um, do I think that that alone would make him a piece of shit? No, I think that doesn't make you the best coach, maybe, you know, but take it on, but everybody's going to have their own. I think that's why that's not why he's had. Yeah, he's had a rough year coaching people and bringing them to stage or not bringing them to stage. Right. Um, But like it's it's the other stuff like, you know, gaslighting Quint into thinking he had fake gear. Yeah. I can kind I can kind of relate uh, to like the Jansen clients because I, when I turned pro, I was with a coach, and at the time he was deep into bodybuilding. But then his like gear started turning, and he became literally like a triathlon athlete. He started losing all his muscle. He's a foot doctor. Uh-huh. It's like you're doing everything else Careful. besides bodybuilding, and it's just it was time for me to find a bodybuilding coach. And I think the athletes um, can also tell when it's time that their coaches got other interests. Like whenever Nick posted that he was sw- swimming for his cardio, the apple doesn't yeah. fall far from the tree and you're going to kind of do what crazy. your coach is doing. And it's just yeah. when Matt was, when Matt was bodybuilding, all of his clientele was successful. And that's when I think he was on a rise, but you know, he's a dad. And he has his business and he's like trying to be a triathlon athlete. So it's just now, now of interest. Those things are fine, right? Let's say, okay, I want to focus on my family. I want to do be a triathlete. That's that's great. But I feel like if you have guys on the Olympia, which at any level, but especially at the Olympia level, you, you, you have to let this be known. You have to be like, hey, this is not, I'm not really, you know? I feel like you have to express that because if not, Imagine Nick, this is second year. You're like, damn, what, what the fuck, bro? I I, I kind of want to do the Olympics. It's kind of a big point, motherfucker. Like this is this is kind of a, a big deal. So like that, that that's a huge ball to drop, you know. And it shouldn't take that to 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 let you take a step back. 
He hasn't officially retired still, but I mean, come on, you know. Like, like that's. I thought he did on. I thought he backed out on one of those posts. He finally said like. He never really said it. <laughs> he he just so kind of. <laughs> yeah, he he never really really said. I felt like the, even that post, it was a good post. I, I think it could have been a little bit better. I don't think he should have. I don't think he should have defended his coaching. Even though I mean, either go, man. I mean, I, maybe you felt you need to do that, but I don't. I don't think at that point you want to be more apologetic than than defending anything because it is what it is at that point, you know. And Quint, Quint said his piece. Just I, I think you just take it on the chin and be like, my fault. You know, I'm out of here. I retire. <laughs> I, I think it affected Quentin more than like just physically. I think it affected him like emotionally too, because it's been a minute since the New York Pro or was that whatever show he did with Matt. And yeah, but uh, uh, and I, he, huh? he he did the Toronto a few weeks later on his own. I think with a little help from Dorian, and he looked significantly better. Right, but you know the the story with Quentin is like it's more than just like. You know, dropping the ball with coaching and stuff. There's like two years, first. You know, it's two years. Yeah, um, and, and, and like he also he also tried to like get Matt to pay for his. Uh, sorry, uh, Matt tried to get Quentin to help pay for his travel and lodging fees for the New York Pro when Quentin didn't even know he was going to be there. He was there to coach Nick. Quentin happened to run into him at one of the gyms in New Jersey. They're like, oh, you're here. And then he sends him a fucking invoice after it's all said and done for like, you know, half of his flight or something and half of his hotel stay. So like, what? You you shit the bed. You did terrible with this client. You didn't agree to like go split the costs or anything of this travel beforehand. And then you have the nerve to send him that and tell him his gear is fake. I would like to defend him at some point because I, that's just how I am. I, I, I like depend, defending people I feel like are at a low point, but it ain't really much for me to say to, to defend. I mean, it's, 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 it is what it is. So, Quinn said his piece I, and, you know, uh, huh? <laughs> I don't want to argue over that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, and I mean, I, I'm sure, I, I'm sure, um, there's other people who have stuff to say, with it, but they, they, they probably won't say it because it's, it's it's probably it's kind of done now. There's there's, there's no need. I, I feel like everybody kind of gets the point, and Matt kind of kind of retired. So uh, we'll just leave it. We'll just leave it at that. You know, then you know. Now that being that being said, in general, do you think coaches get too much praise for their athletes? Yeah. <laughs> Are you kidding me? It depends on what coach and team you're on, because I feel like some teams are cults in a sense. Well, like, think about it. Think of every top guy. Like, go back to their entire career. They almost always do so much shit on their own. You know what they I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, I'm sorry. Like, listen, I, and I'll give like the best look I ever had was at Tampa, Dylan brought that look. It was it was great, you know? I bring that with 20 plus pounds, it's, you know, we're in there. Yeah. Um, but, like, he did that in five weeks. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, so Dylan got the love for it, but, like, and not that it wasn't his work, he did it, mm-hmm. but you know what I mean? Like, I, I put in two years with Morgan Rice before that, yeah. and you know, and it was actually kind of the same thing. Morgan's head wasn't in coaching. That's why I left mm-hmm. five weeks out, three weeks out of the show. I was going to do. It was nothing personal. I didn't fucking, you know, I wasn't going to judge the man on it. Like, it is what it is. Next time I saw him, I dapped him up. We, tra- we trained arms, and you know what I mean? Yeah. We still bullshit here and then. Like, it, it just is what it is. But we, um, you know, that like that show was on my work ethic. Yeah, so, well, okay, so, so I guess my point is that. If you're good, you're going to be good. You're going to be good. <laughs> yep. Now, now a coach can take you to the next level, right? Here, here's the only issue I have. When coaches make it about themselves, right? Not to randomly call out somebody, but let's say George Farrah, right? I think he was the first coach that kind of made that a thing. Like, Chad coached the whole lineup, but it was never about Chad. It was, it was always about Ronnie and Flex and them. 
But uh, George Farrell kind of made it a thing. Let's be real. To to that George is the man. Like it's not Dexter and Branch. George is the fucking man. And it's like, nah, you're not the man. You know, they they're the ones doing it. And they were they were great bodybuilders before you. You know, and now okay. The bigger issue I have is that those kind of coaches, when shit goes bad, they're never there to take any credit when shit goes bad. All of a sudden, oh, I don't know what happened. It must have been he looked great. He looked great when I saw him. I don't know what happened. It was but, great year. What are you talking about? You know. So it's like if you're gonna take the good, you have to take the bad. And a lot of coaches take all the good and they get all these clients. But when shit goes south, they they detach themselves. Oh, I don't know. You know, uh, he he was following my plan. I don't know what he did. It's like. Come on, man. You know, I don't want to call too many names, but I've seen it so many times. Like they're taking credit, full credit. Next thing you know, the look is in the look. Oh no, I don't. I, I wasn't really. No, no, not not like that. I'm just. I'm like, okay, that's 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 weird. That's weird. So, I think I, I think that's my issue. If you're gonna take the good, take the bad, or just don't take all that good. Just stay in the back seat and just give them their their shine, right? You know. So. I think uh, there's yeah. more, more drama too. A, a point of example with that is everything that's going on with Samson right now. Uh, you see, like that's the other drama going on. They're calling him out if if his wife is actually his coach. Yeah, because they, 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 like, first of all, I, mean, I don't see why he lie about that. There's nothing, there's nothing there. Michael Warner had a advisory like role in yeah. that process. Yeah, he lives in Vegas. Yeah, he's. Yeah. Um, He's not claiming credit here. No, I There's didn't. one bodybuilding news page that's like making this into a big deal, and it's not. And they, they made a post thing. last night about it, and they already took it down. And then they put up another one this morning. And Michael's in the comments like, hey, this is bullshit. Like, this is not what I said. Like, so, oh. you know, some people just want clicks and views. Exactly. Michael, he's, really, uh, he's one of those guys. He, he helps a lot of people and doesn't want credit or like he just love bodybuilding. I mean, there, I there's a lot of coaches like that though. They there, there's sometimes there'll be another coach that is your main, especially in the females. I feel like you know, all, there's like, all the time. There, it's it's like a I guess you could call it a shadow coach, and those guys don't take credit for it. But then when they look amazing, this other person who just has a name is getting all the credit for it. Well, Bill Vivid uh, mm -hmm. ghost preps a lot of people. Yeah, he does actually. <laughs> but, but, but. What did you uh, say, Brady? What did Brady say? He said Phil Viz ghost preps a lot of people. Yes, he, I've heard that. He does, that's but. I, I don't know if that's. I, I, I don't know, know if that's. does that too. I mean, my, my coach, AJ Sims, has been caught up in that too. Like, that's why he yeah. got out of coaching a lot of top pros for that exact reason. Now, that, 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 sometimes the athletes at fault because that's happened to me a few times. Where I'm, 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 I'm fucking prepping somebody, that's right? On the athlete. That's not on no coach. The coach is trying, no. to help, is trying to do a favor every time. It's always the thing of doing a favor. It's, it's on the athlete. Yeah. yeah. All right, so uh, there's one one client in particular. I'm getting ready for the Nationals. Send a check-in or whatever. I'm like, okay, I hope he's fucking okay, good. Wow, he's looking his best ever. He comes in. After the show, he gives credit to some other guy. Oh, this is my coach. And he tags me in it. Oh, shout-outs to... To Beatty, you know, keeping an eye on me, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> I'm like, damn, I'm, I'm keeping an eye. Okay, now yeah. I, I don't, I don't have an issue if you switch coaches, but let me know so I'm, I'm not waking up at night and trying to fucking peek you. You know, I, I don't want to do that. If you don't want me to do that, I, I don't want to do it neither. But let me know, you know. But you just, I, I, I don't know what that means. Like, you, how many coaches do you need? Like, why do you want me? coaching you if you have a, I don't it, it, it makes no sense to me personally but sometimes the athletes that they want to list they want to listen to a bunch of different coaches and that's too not, many cooks too many cooks in the kitchen yeah. just not smart just not smart and then you know he got I think he took third or second and it's like I think genetically he could have easily won that show you know but he just he doesn't understand how, how this coaching thing works so he yeah. would have you see See, I will say with with like mm -hmm. Phil, whenever he does it, it's always to help with situations like Quentin's, mm -hmm. and it's always a better result. Yeah, yeah with yeah. good intentions. Like, and that's it. It's always with, and I'm not going to say any particulars, but it's it's always to try to make sure that somebody is a healthy and b about to win a damn show. 
Yeah, um, but who, gets the, but who gets the credit for that coaching if he's the one ghost coaching? See, that's the thing, and that's the thing is Phil don't want no credit. He don't give a shit. He's he in fact tells people don't give him credit. But if someone else is getting credit for what Phil actually did, what does that mean? Okay. He loves bodybuilding. He wants to see the people in. Phil just likes people, man. That's my favorite. Is, part about Phil. Phil gets a bad rap just because he's very matter of fact and calls people out, and he does it a little excessively sometimes, but. At the end of the day, man, Phil is probably one of the most kind-hearted people I've ever met that cares about the people he loves deeply. So, like, he just wants to help people. What's his name? Uh, uh, Dylan? Dylan, right? Dylan Blow? What's that Dylan? Yeah, 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 Dylan. Yeah, F F Phil was helping him coach, right? Phil is like his... Yeah, yeah, yeah. His, so I, think, his I think Dylan is still under him, yeah. Okay, okay. Well, that's, yeah. that's, what, that, that's what's up. <laughs> yeah, Dylan, hey, Dylan was good too, man. And I worked with yeah. Nelson. Um, mm -hmm. Nelson was also a disciple of Phil. Mm -hmm. And like, man, they were all good. My best, my other best look came at the the one that I qualified in classic at uh, Norfolk. So did time. did Phil help you, Pete? No, no, Nelson or uh, Dylan did everything. Oh, okay. okay. Dylan, was, hey, Dylan, Dylan's <laughs> nice with it, man. Listen. I may have left him. I ain't going. But Dylan is nice with it, man. I, I, the peaks he did with me were good. I, I mean, you guys have seen him. Even Cal, man, like Cal. I think I could have just been leaner, but the peak was good. Um, you know, I think I just needed to push a little bit deeper into conditioning, and my tan was, you know what I mean. But well, okay. So just because you also just because you leave a coach doesn't mean the coach is a, is a bad coach. Sometimes you just want to try try something different. My you best look came with him, and I grew a lot in the last year. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, Dylan, Dylan's good, bro. I, I, again, my my reasons for leaving it got nothing to do with that. And you know, if anybody listening was thinking about using them, well, if anybody I, listening has fake gear, holla at your girl. <laughs> 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 no, no, but yeah. To be honest, in, in general, I do feel like coaches get too much good good credit. And then, for some reason, the athlete usually takes the credit when shit goes to shit, right? Um, okay, uh, I I'll say that, like, uh, Hany, H I think Hani is the GOAT. I think Hani is the greatest of all time, you know? But, if we're being honest, now, uh, w w when Derek came in slightly off, a lot of people are shitting on Derek, though. Think about that, right? I, I, I'm not saying it's Hani's fault or Derek's fault. I'm just saying if you just think about it generally, right? How come when the client doesn't look the part or, or doesn't look as good as previously, the client gets shitted on, but when they look great, the coach gets, you know, the accolades, right? If you think about it, it that's not really that's not really fair. I think it should be split down the middle, or you know, either give it all to the athlete or to the coach, or split it down the middle. But I don't like that it's that it goes up and down depending on when wins and losses. Person, I still think but Hani's the goat though. Huh? I'm not saying he's not. All right. Okay. Before we do questions, let, let me see if there's anything going on else in the industry. Let me see if there's more, more drama going on. <laughs> let me share the screen. Been a lot of drama in the last month, like especially yeah, yeah. Yeah, like Chris Sebum retiring. Like, oh wait, oh, oh wait, it's it's over, and we have nothing to look forward to. So we're grasping at straws, <laughs> trying to find something entertaining. <laughs> Where's the drama? I listen. I'm a gossip artist. <laughs> every every time I open Instagram, I just see a, a background video and then Nick Trigley's face. Like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> he's about the guy. He, he's about to make money right now. He's making money. His drama going he, on. He's just sitting at his house, like, okay, what what can I get? What, oh, oh, go right now. He's getting paid. But I was gonna say, um, Big Lenny passed away. The, uh, I, I don't know if we mentioned that, but R.P. Big Big Lenny. R.I.P. I don't know how, how old he was. All right. No, I, I don't see anything. Oh, yeah. But I was talking about this to Compton the other day, and I was like, yo, I feel like, I feel like, um, Mike, Mike, Mike uh, uh, what's his real name? I, I don't want to call him Mike the Badass. I want to call him Summerfeld. <laughs> okay, Mike Summerfeld. I, I just, uh, I'm just not going to call him this, this, this name. But Mike, Mike, <laughs> Mike Summerfeld. <laughs> I think he was a better bodybuilder than, than Sebum that day. But too bad it's not bodybuilding, right? It's classic physique, I guess. But uh, I feel like bodybuilding criteria. I, I feel like he was beating him. I mean, I'm looking at the shots. He looks like Martin to me. 
Like, look, his his glutes are more in. I think he has a better back back double. I mean, I think it's a in. similar thing to like the open though. Like, like Mike's Structure. glutes are in, and he has certain things, but C bum overall is just. Like I feel Samson. like C. I feel like CP, yeah, good point. Yeah, he, he's beating him, him on structure. Only thing is that I don't know if he's more muscular. I just think he's a bigger person. But but mus muscularity, I think, I, I don't know. Yeah, CP does look a little bigger. But muscularity, I, it might be even. I think he's a bigger guy than him. But In uh, person, too, when you see guys that tall next to guys like Mike, who's like a little bit shorter than me, yeah, maybe my name, right? something to that effect. It's it's a lot more dramatic when you're watching it real real time, especially like as we're moving. You know what I mean? Like, I will agree with that. Uh, see, bum with that gold gold Venice once, and I swear to God, I'm looking. I'm like that body build looks a lot like like see, bum. But <laughs> in my head, I'm like, there's no way that could be see. I'm like, see, bum. He's not a big guy. He's just like, you know, he's classic. I mean, he he looks like like you know like a a guy who works out. I don't fucking know. I, I, in my head, see, bum was gonna look. Like kind of big, but not that big. But he looked legit like a bodybuilder. Like it, all of this was going on, and in the videos, he looks just like, yeah. In the videos, to me, he looks kind of like normal, just like you know, he's lean and shit. But the motherfucker was big, and I'm like, oh, okay, that makes sense because he's a bigger person. Like I'm six foot, right? I'm 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 pretty fucking big, right? And he looks like a he's a bigger person than me, right? Like yeah. he just is, you know. He has a big head, big hands. He's big. And I'm like. I, I didn't expect that. I honestly didn't expect. I thought he was more like a more mainstream looking guy, but he looked yeah, like a bodybuilder. Like I know Jordan's not that tall, but Jordan's a fucking. He's just like a big dude. He's wide plavically. He's got a, a head that's like three times the size of my head. Jordan's way bigger in person. Yeah. Well, well. Yeah. Sometimes those guys in pictures they don't look as big because on their body their structure is so big, right? Right. So sometimes in pictures, uh, like Andrew, if you see Andrew in person, I mean Andrew actually looks big in pictures, but in person he doesn't look human. He just looks like, like <laughs> he looks like an alien, He's right? Huge. Oh yeah, you was backstage with him probably. Yeah, you you, you saw him probably yeah. super close. He's a mom. I mean, I'm tiny, but he's <laughs> freaking he's huge. Yeah. But you know who's the probably the biggest person I've seen, and not just like height wise, is Justin. Which Justin? Abbott. Justin Abbott. He yeah he he he's pretty fucking dense. His neck, like I mean he 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 has to be challenging Exilla with that one. His <laughs> neck is fucking. He got like a thirty inch neck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I it shit is crazy. All right, I don't I don't see anything worth covering. Let's do some questions then. Let's do some questions. Do some questions. Ask no question making statements. Assume. Does anybody remember that? Does anybody remember that? What's that? Making statements. Assume. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was like when right. YouTube was like, like, B like brand new. The only, the only video entertainment we ever had. All right. Damn, all the all the questions about Matt. <laughs> I'm also questions. Do you think Matt's done as a coach? I think so. I, I mean, he was going to retire anyways, but I, I think I this think is a better so. process. You know, you I think, think coach people. I think he'll find another uh, like realm of coaching because I think just he's a coach in general, and it's in his like genetics to coach. Mm -hmm. So maybe it won't be bodybuilding, but I'm sure he'll coach something for sure. Oh, I mean, yeah, but, um, I guess uh, that's possible. I, I feel like he doesn't have this, the the same passion, the same passion for it, but. So the, but I, I'm, I'm sure he'll coach. get the breadcrumbs of coaching just to get some money for bodybuilding for sure, too. Probably. What do you guys think? You, you think you think Matt, Matt has finished coaching, or you think he's gonna continue? I would be. Yeah. What do you think, Charles? I mean, it's a shitty way to see him go out, but it sounds yeah. like that's what he said. Yeah, it sounds like. All right. Uh, Everyone was like, Jansen doesn't miss. Jansen doesn't miss. And this year, everyone's shitting on him. But I think if, you, if you've if watched him since the days of training with Dallas and 
making the arsenal equipment and all that like he was deep into it and then it just he started kind of passing his clientele to other coaches and he's mm-hmm. making business like you could just see it happening and i just slowly stopped watching and following him when he started venturing off into other things besides bodybuilding mm-hmm. that was just me as a fan i look up to matt he's got good coaching and training techniques and stuff but yeah. Shit happens, shit happens. But what if you're a client that just hired Matt the day before all this shit went down? <laughs> uh, you you about to get uh, trained by uh, Jacoby uh, or Cheeks. Ed Cameron? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're good, though. Like, they're, 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 they're good coaches, though. Jacoby and, 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 and Cheeks, they get busy. Mr. Cheeks. <laughs> That's what I call him. <laughs> all right. Where would Beirut's Tony Nick in the old lineup? Wait, what? I think he meant place. He didn't say place, but I think he meant to say where would you? Oh, where would you put Beirut's Tony Nick in the old lineup that just passed? Uh, baby, I said Beirut's is no joke. My guy Beirut's is a is a menace, bro. Do you think like Nick a, would be Martin? This Martin. Ooh, I don't know. I got he's, not, he's not dense enough. He ain't dense enough to be funny. This, this Martin, honestly, re, like after looking back at the tapes, this Martin probably should have beat Derek. If I'm being completely honest, just l- looking at pose for pose, I'm like, where is Derek beating him? You know, I didn't think this was going to happen. I, I think Martin is phenomenal, but. Looking, looking pose for pose, I'm like, I, I honestly see Martin beating Derek. I mean, with all due respect, right? So that means Nick would have to beat both of them. I, I mean, he could obviously. I mean, he just beat Martin, but would he have? What 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 Nick is showing up here? What which what 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 what, what version of Nick is showing up here? You know, I don't, I, I don't know. It, it will be very difficult at this point. M- Martin was, he was. He, he was it was flawless. There was not a weak body part. There was not a, a drop of fat, drop of water on his body. He couldn't have been even any any more carved up. You know, it, it, everything was exactly where the fuck it needed to be. So yeah, I mean, Martin could have beat anybody that day. I think he could have beat on that uh, on that Saturday. He could have beat he could have beat anybody. Literally anybody. I, I really think the reason he didn't beat Derek was because he flattened out after the second round. It was on the third round when Steve was posing him on Saturday. He, he flattened out. It looked like he went hypo or his blood sugar just dropped a little bit. Uh-huh. He started sweating, got a little tired. And I, I think that's, you know how Steve is too. Like, yeah, he, you know, he wants he you to fight like, for nope. it. Yep. Nope. You didn't, you didn't win the fight. Didn't you win the it. bodybuilding part. And, and then he, he wiped, he wiped off his sweat and threw it on the floor. It probably hit Steve. Steve, they're like, they like nah, bro. Bro. nah. <laughs> doing all this. He, he always does that. He goes like this, yeah. and he smack. <laughs> he does, no, but yeah, I, I think mine could have beat could have beat anybody out there. So he said, "Would would would he have beat him?" I don't know about that. Uh, Nick, I, I think I, I think mine could could he beat mine? Of course he could, but anything could I happen. Think- would he have? I don't know. I, I I don't know if he could. I got to be honest. I think his best on that day doesn't beat Martin on that day. The the the, the be- okay. That, that's a better question. The best Nick we we've seen so far would, would that have beat Martin? I don't think so. What do you think, Stu? Oh wait, wait, wait. Say that again. You cut off a little bit. I'm kind of I'm kind of agnostic on it. I don't. Yeah. I don't it, know. It, it, it's kind of a hard. It's kind of a hard thing to because Nick Nick just did just beat him. You know, I don't know. That, that's all. Yeah, to see it. It was too so close. It, it was super close. It was too um, close. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The, the show was that day. Those guys lined up next to each other on that day. What is his best? Like you can say all these things, but Mark was really. a free that day, and he got awarded for it. Facts. Okay. So, so to answer his question, where, where would they place? Let's say I would say Nick would have placed in the top five, somewhere in the top five. Uh, to, I mean, part I of think, the reason that he backed out, right, is is probably because he he was worried that he was going to drop. So, good, very good point. Very good right point. There. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, okay. So, so the truth is that if he would have done it, no, he wouldn't have beat Martin because Matt, Matt, Matt is not in his, uh, in his peak, peak performance right now. Let's say that. So, <laughs> more than likely, no. If, if Nick gets a new coach and he was doing this and this and this, then, then like, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. It's, not, like, it's, it's just, it, it was the show that day, you know? Yeah, facts, that's facts. All right, I, I would say Nick would have been top five. Tonio and Beirut's. Beirut's top ten, Tonio, I think, would have fell back a little pretty far this year. Be Beirut's for sure top ten, right? Who was ten, who was ten place? John? I think it was Jewett, yeah. Jewett? Yeah. Okay. Yep, he was 10th. 11th. Yeah. Like Jewett was 11th? Yeah. So who would, Akeem, who, where's Akeem? 9th? 8th? Okay. 6th? Wait, wait, wait. 5th is Andrew, right? Yeah, 5th is Andrew. 6th is Hunter? Yes. 7th yeah. was uh Rafa, 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 or Hafa, I'm sorry. Yeah. And then 8th was Curry. Oh shit! Nine with Bon Bonac? No, no, no. Eight with Bonac. Nine was Curry. Ah, oh, fuck! I don't yeah. know, bro. Bay Bayou's already beat. Oh no, Bonac. Who won? Oh, Bayou's beat Bonac at the Dubai. He did. No? He did. Yeah. Oh, boom! There, 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 there we go. But, but Bonac also beat him. Yes. I, mean, I don't. I don't know if I agree. With, I don't know. If, I, I don't know if I agreed with that though. I gotta be honest. I would. I, I would probably on their both best day. I would probably go. With Bruce, not Bonac, but I, yeah, I no shade to Bonac. I, I love no, Bonac. yeah, Bonac is great. Don't don't. I mean, don't Bruce was getting compared to Samson and tall bodybuildings and style, bro. I mean, if he he could have shaken up that lineup, I feel like is big enough. I mean, dense enough. I mean, he's been around. Like, I think so. I think so. I, I think the I tall, think... the tall might have played to his favor in that lineup. That's he, he's not it's big enough to be with him, with him favoring Samson. I feel like when you favor a guy like that. You kind of looked. I think that is also maybe what helped Andrew kind of lift up over Hunter was yeah, they yeah. clearly are going for an aesthetic look. For sure. Right. So uh, Beirut. Be I don't think Beirut is big and dense enough to beat Andrew and Hunter, but I think he could be Rafa, man. I think he could be Rafa. I got to be honest with you. I think he. I don't know if y'all got to agree with that. I, I think. I think he could be as high as seventh. I was, let's say top eight. I think like top that. eight. Uh well well so can Tonio beat John Jewett? Yeah, Tonio could yeah. beat John Jewett. You don't I think don't so? Know. Dude, Jewett look think... fucking so dense. He did. I don't know. Antonio's a lot more dense in person. When I saw him in Cali, I was I was a lot more impressed than I was with anything online. But he could with bad shots, like hamstring top to bottom, it's it's pretty crazy. Uh, yeah, I get adductors too with Jewett. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good thing. But we're happy. I mean, yeah. Jewett, Jewett is out bodybuilding him. He, he he's he's out peaking him for, for sure. But but Tonio's been he's really been winning on 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 shape right on shape muscle bellies sometimes in condition right. So would that be enough? I don't know. Uh, um, uh, Stu, you, you got Tonio or Jewett? That's a tough one. <laughs> Tonio would probably win, but and I don't want to take anything away from John because, like you said, he's out bodybuilding him. You know, it has to count for something. Not everything, but it has to count for something. You know, I thought, um, like John De La Rosa beat uh, Foda. I could say he out bodybuilded Foda, but I still I still thought Foda should have won. I thought I thought Foda had, had enough of a peak, but it's just better better structurally, genetically, you know. So it's like, yeah, which way you want to go? I think I, I think I could have Tony. Oh, but John 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 wasn't even wasn't top ten. So I was gonna say Tony was top ten. Wait, who was tough? I'm sorry, I forgot. Team, Akeem. Akeem ah. I don't know if, if Tonio Akeem looked really fucking good. Can to Can Tonio beat Akeem normally? Maybe he could he could get him, but I thought this Akeem was really fucking good. I, I don't know what you guys thought. I thought he was a really good Akeem. Yeah. Wait. What? Um, no. Huh? Brady's muted. Yeah, I didn't hear me. I didn't hear Brady. I said it when Akeem's on. Akeem is dangerous as fuck. Sorry, I forgot I muted it. Yeah. 
Now, Antonio really beats him by, by a landslide in the back double, but that's one pose. That's one pose, you know? Yeah. From the side, Akeem beats him from the front. I think Akeem beats him from the front, so I don't know. Uh, that, that's going to be a close one. So, Tonio, top 10, eh, really, uh, almost, almost. But And then Beru, yeah, Beru is going to be in there. All right. Let's do a – we should get Nick on the podcast. I'm, I wonder if he would do a podcast right now. Hey, the girl that beat me in um, Texas, she got fifth at the Olympia. Oh, uh, what's her name? Her name is Zama. So the girl that beat me in Texas, she got fifth place. And the girl that I beat, Sharonica, she got third place. So you're top five. Go ahead. I'm pretty much third place at the Olympia. Yeah, the girl. Uh huh. I think I'm. I think I'm definitely top five. I just have to prove it. I can't say it. Um, yeah, first, it's right. But it just makes it more realistic seeing that on my end. Yeah, I mean, I think I think you're, you're top five for sure. Top five for sure. You know, they, they they're both the the girl that won Texas. I think she has a really incredible back. But I could have. I, I, I had you winning. I could have even had Sh- Sharonica beating her though. Just overall. Overall, though, you know, but her, her back, her back is insane. We didn't actually know who she was, but she came up in our feed on the way to Texas, and I was like, "Yo, look at this girl's back!" And I showed the guy. I'm like, "What the fuck?" I thought well, it was I, her back. I, I, I think she has a good back, but I think it's maybe it's her back, but maybe it's her waist too. Like, I don't have a small waist. I don't think I have a bad back now, but like, I don't have a. Or like, the some some girls are like genetically shaped like a cook, like different. I know she and, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I think she's gifted in that area, but she also has an amazing back on top of it. That's right. Yeah. Um, the back, back is crazy. Uh, do you do you think Keon can <laughs> he completely butchered the name? Uh but uh, he's trying to say, do you think <laughs> Keon can beat Tonio in the open class? Yes. Yes. Uh, I think I, I think so. I might have to say yes. Uh Tonio is great though. Uh, we love you, Tonio. I don't know if he watches. But uh yeah. I think I think, bro, I think you know, could even make a case to get into like the top eight. Like I gotta I mean, be honest, man. That was a good or not Tony, I meant uh Keon, rather like, Keon, that was a good fucking Keon. You know, that, you know, that was incredible. I think I think that Keon I think that Keon beats Jewett. I think that Keon could beat Akeem. I guess it depends how they want to judge it. Because it if you preface size, it's key. Uh, obviously, Keem is a lot bigger. Like Keem uh, ain't that tall though, for real. Like, I mean, he's like, he's like what, right. Five, yeah, he's like yeah. They, they 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 say he's five ten, but he's he's not five ten. He's not five ten. <laughs> 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 I'm five ten as well. For sure. <laughs> well, walking well, two twelve. Well, he wasn't even two twelve. He was like two hundred five. This exact Keon, I would I would personally have him battling Rafa. But I'm not a judge, so whatever the fuck that means. And I uh, think that's I, where he gets blown out by a dude who's just way naturally bigger. You, you think so? so I mean, uh, uh, he, he did, uh, but Hoffa did beat Tonio, but I think Keon beat Tonio. I think I think he could beat Rafa if Rafa is not peeled. And Rafa, he wasn't peeled, bro. You know? Well, honestly, I was thinking if he would have showed up like that. So we're saying Tonio not in the top 10, but like. At the Arnold, if Rafa would have showed up like that, I think Tonya would have taken it. Wait, which one? The Arnold Brazil. I thought I thought Tonya oh. took it. I thought, I thought Tonya took it. Took it. Place as well. yeah, I did too. I did too. Yeah. But gonna win I, that show. <laughs> There's no way. You know, it's funny because uh, we was on a podcast with Xavier and Nathan. Remember? And Nathan was like, "Yo, if you if you go to Brazil." Like you're not you're not gonna beat Rafa, bro. Like you like save your money. It's not gonna happen. But he he, he was right. I mean, me put that was like ah, he'll probably get it if he's quite a bit better. But I mean, he was he was quite a bit better. But he didn't win. So, Did he really like, clog his toilet? <laughs> that that's 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 what we don't <laughs> so know funny. for sure. Still, Tony <laughs> says he didn't. He said he clogged his toilet. <laughs> that's all I remember of that situation. <laughs> Tony. <laughs> Tonio, he he got on he got on here and he denied the allegations, but I believe Tonio clogged his toilet. <laughs> I, I firmly believe Tonio clogged his toilet. 
<laughs> Have you met Tonio? Nah, bro. Tonio definitely clogged his toilet. Yeah, he probably did. <laughs> That's hilarious. But can, yeah, yeah, I think Keon can beat Tonio. I think Keon with yeah, another ten pounds. Been so mad. Yeah, I think Keon with another 10, 10, 15 pounds could be like a a a, a top top open Olympian. But I mean, if, if Derek did it, I, I yeah, think Keon. I think he is it. now. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, what is he's super complete. He's in condition, like. Let's not forget the second and third place were still four two twelve guys in short. You know, I was gonna say so, he's very comparable to Derek in my opinion, and Derek doesn't know how to hit his hamstrings in the rear double because his hamstrings are there. He just that, don't know that, how to pose them. That, that's my ideology. I, I think I think he's a better version of Derek. He's not as big as Derek yet, but he will be. And if when he is, I, he's gonna be right up there. Now, as of Derek got second the first his first open show and and he wasn't I'm sure he wasn't that much bigger right maybe 220 I don't fucking know you know so Keon at anywhere close to Derek Derek's weight beat in my in my opinion beats Derek so I think that would put him right up there with with uh, with the top guys you know but let's see let's see how long he stays in there I think I think at least two more years because he's making weight super easy, you know. All right. Yeah. If Quinn picked another coach, who would be a good fit? I don't fucking know. I don't know. What? Mm-hmm. My fault. You, you you cut out a little bit. Uh, Quentin now. Oh, you oh, you're, you're coaching him? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Boom. It's two. Yeah. I Go thought that was public us. information, but yeah, it's uh, it's it's happening. Uh, we're making a lot of progress together. Um, most of the coaching process consists of sending memes uh, to each other. Uh, <laughs> hey, that's it's really funny. That's get how closer. Happened. You heard it here first. Breaking news. <laughs> I mean, listen. Uh, uh, he, he said he's not interested in coaches, right? I don't think so. Yeah. Well, that, Matt hurt him. Matt hurt him. <laughs> you, you're I, bet you, I bet you. I bet you. Quentin has coaches trying to coach him right now, so he could probably pick Damn and right. choose. And he's probably like, he needs his space. Damn right. That happened to Dennis Wolf, and Dennis Wolf career actually. Uh, skyrocketed after that. He had a bad experience with uh, Patrick Tour, he said, and then he said, fuck it, no more coaching, and then he just coached himself, and he won what he won, uh, Arnold, and he, he he actually did better, believe it or not, so shout out uh, shout out Dennis Wolf and Patrick Tour, I guess. <laughs> hey, Patrick Tour <laughs> told me that I have no potential and that he wouldn't take me to his client because of that. Fuck that it. sucks. You know, he don't fuck with you. <laughs> I think we talked about this before on the podcast, but yeah, I I feel like I heard that before. I think we, yeah, but like to this day, bro. Like when I think about it, every time I hear his name, like I get a little bit more salty. I'm like, hey, I, I mean, bro, I suck that bad. I mean, guys, like, look day, at me in the eyes and tell me if I suck, Stu. Stu, you can't lie. You physically can't lie. Tell me if I suck. Lead the fifth. <laughs> no, I mean, listen. If, if a coach doesn't want to work with you, shit, I, I don't. I, I don't want to work with you neither. Fuck it, right. you know. I, I don't. I, I, it, it it is his right to pick and choose, but it is what it is. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't. I, I I can't see most coaches saying that, but some do though. I'm I'm sure. I'm sure some some coaches do do that. You know. All right. Thoughts on no. <laughs> it's a lot of quick questions. Charles, where do you live? Sorry. I'm in I live in Vegas. Oh yeah, Vegas. I think we talked about that time. Yeah, no, I I moved out here a year ago. I was in California before that. Where at in Cali? Uh Orange County. Okay. Not far from where all these guys were, like Joe and Paul and right. but we were talking about at the beginning. I've never actually me and Body had just started talking in Texas, but we lived in the same place for like five years. Yeah, yeah. 
I kind of like n- known of you and I, I, I would see you around and stuff or see pictures of you and training with like people I know and stuff like that. But we never actually like met up. Where you think more? Huh? I'm Columbus. I'm Columbus. I'm where the Arnold is. Ohio, nice. All right. Do you think more clients should speak up about bad coaching experiences? No. Keep it to yourself and move on. <laughs> you need something to talk about, actually. Let her rip. Right. This gives us material. <laughs> okay, okay. So, so when, when that video came out, I think I said in the group chat, I'm usually against. I'm usually against people talking. Well, but but then he wasn't really talking shit. He was just saying his experience. But usually, I'm against people talking shit about coaches. Like it was this one guy was talking about Milos gave him heart failure. Yeah, he he worked with Milo like Milos like a couple of months, and he had heart failure apparently way before that. So it's like that, that, that's just weird. That, that's just the, no accountability. But you, in this situation, are you talking about that guy Mike, the bald I, dude. I, I think that I think was his name is Mike. I think yeah. that's his name, yeah. That 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 to me is weird. That, that to me is weird. But this this situation, I had no issue with it. He was just saying his part. He felt like he needed to say it, and he said it, and that's perfectly fine, you know. But sometimes I see a lot of even with um, what's that coach that uh that got it? I, I don't want to say it this way because it sounds mean, but I can't think of his name. Shelby, Shelby. I, I didn't want to describe him. That, uh, that would have yeah. been mean. But but the but, guy that uh, caught a couple <laughs> bodies. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I was trying to avoid it. But um now he, he is to take he is to take you know a lot of blame for that. But a lot of these girls, they already know what he's about. They know it. And when they're winning, they're happy. But once once they don't win, then they're mad. And I'm like, you don't get to you don't get to do that though. You're you're aware of all this information, you're aware of of whatever incidents he, he had. So if you choose him, you're choosing knowingly knowing that. And then when you're winning, you're happy. No, he's a great coach. That That's not fair in that way. Now, you know, if if, if you're aware of the, of the bodies, no, I think, you know. I think when people talk about the coaches who push a lot of gear. But he's... Oh, wait. Go ahead, Stu. My, my fault. You, you, you kind of cut out. I think more important than, like, the women that died with him is like the the much larger number of women who have permanently messed up bodies from working with him because he does shit really cookie cutter it's like 120 micrograms of t uh, of clan 100 mics of t3 um shit loads of cardio no food yeah that's going to get everybody in shape and it will almost everybody fuck him up pretty bad so like that like, yeah, he's extreme, and, like, you can say, oh, well, you knew what you're getting yourself into. You went you went to the best. Like, he's not the best if he has to throw the kitchen sink at you every single time to get you in shape, right? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I don't, I don't think he's, I, I don't, I don't think he's the best at all, but my, my only thing is that if you, even if you win, it's still not okay, right? That, that, that's how I feel. I feel like if you have to do I've heard 200 MCGs of T3, 200 MCGs of Clan. I've heard diuretics for two weeks, right? Two weeks straight diuretics, right? That don't so, even sound fun. <laughs> if, if, I feel like if, if I've heard right. that, I'll back to I, feel like, I feel like if, if I've heard that about him, and, and I'm a guy, I'm not a girl, and I have no interest in, in working with him. If I heard that, I feel like they've had to have heard some of this, <laughs> some of this. So once you hear that, you should be like, I don't give a fuck if I win because dead people don't win. And eventually some shit is going to happen to me. Maybe, maybe you might be able to do it. I mean, think about it. I mean, he does bring in girls crazy, but how long does he bring them crazy? Like, he, doesn't, huh? he posts those ones. I mean, you don't hear about the other ones. I mean, yeah. I, I, Alyssa, don't take this the wrong way, but I think women tend to kind of like chat with each other a little more and talk about like, there's a little more group thing going on there. Like they're going to go to the guy who coaches all the women. That's true. You know what I'm that's saying true. Yeah, yeah. it's, yeah. it's so, literally a cult, man. It's like, Oh, Cameron cheek is hit miss or not missing. I'm going with the camp Jansen or, and when I, when I first got with my coach, Yassine, the only people he had was I, the, I'm not going to even name the one girl that was relevant at the time, but he basically had nobody. Um, 
he had people, but not like he didn't have Terrence Ruffin. He didn't have me. But once he had me and we won the New York Pro, here comes an influx of people because of what I did. And it's like, y'all just want him because of what, but it's not going to be the same because nobody trains how I train and eat how I eat and cardio. How that, That's why I have to take minimal gear because I progress naturally in a sense. And the gear is just the icing on the cake. No, no diet, no nothing crazy needed. And I, I just, the, the women that I feel like use the kitchen sink method with their coaches, it's because they don't know what the fuck they're doing in general. They don't the understand. Sh- the, 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 uh, I mean, I, I don't even expect them to get it, but the coach doesn't get it, you know? I just don't think, um, yeah, yeah. Well, I think the coach is having to throw all that extra T3 and Clint and whatever else because the client's not training hard enough or intense enough to make the progress. So they're using the, the drugs to do that for them. And that's where the internal effects come into play. Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. well, I mean... Women, women are, are are great for for, for business when it comes to coaching. I'll, I'll tell you that. Because <laughs> I, I, I one, one time I had got one good bikini girl, and in like a month I had like ten bikini girls. So <laughs> great job! <laughs> I like I, mean, I like so getting <laughs> I like getting women's physique clients that are kind of like me because most of them don't get into condition with their previous coach. And I'm prepping a girl right now, and she's like lean and dry and looks way better than she did last year. And her coach last year had her on test and trend and all this shit. And he's a classic pro c- competitor. And it's just like a guy coaching a girl can't understand what a girl needs because they're not a girl. So sometimes these guy coaches are throwing guy cycles at these girls. Sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm training a female no matter what. It's just. <laughs> oh, boy, boy. That, that happens often, bro. You, bro. You'll, be, you'll, be, you'll be surprised. Girl, girl, girls, girl, girls are. I mean, uh, even wellness, even wellness. I saw Brazilians I saw are so bad. It's big, yeah, man. <laughs> I, I worked in a hormone clinic, and I used to see their blood work. Like I would, not that I'm gonna, you know, release, it, but I'm just saying I've yeah, seen let, it. Let me see. Let me see it, Charles. <laughs> Both yeah, yeah. Both yeah. Like, <laughs> what, about, what do I do? <laughs> some of these women's test levels that come back. That compete in wellness, like even on a regional level, bro. That's like, yeah, it's I just higher than some dudes. One so, of my, she she was a former client of mine, and then she switched to one of the top uh, wellness coaches in Brazil. I don't know his name. I I, I just know he's one of the top coaches. And then, uh, so in her actual career, she's a singer, right? Think about that, right? So she's like, hey, you know, I've been working with a new coach, but like. My singing, my singing voice is changing. I mean, you, uh-huh. <laughs> you, you would imagine, right? You, if you sing, so I'm like, oh yeah, uh, let me see what you're running. And there, 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 there was some trend in there. I'm like, <laughs> you know, if the trend is, <laughs> if the trend is in there, the singing career is not gonna, uh, it's not gonna progress. Let, 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 let <laughs> Find a different <laughs> hobby, actually. It's... When I when I first got into the sport. I was like a young 17 year old little girl didn't look like this didn't sound like this so people try to keep me safe and protect me and one of the first things i ever heard is don't fuck with tests or trend obviously but trend is like that's different but test in general and i just feel like all these girls are on tests nowadays and i'm like well i've never had to use tests to get to win i mean i thought it's one thing if if you're in bodybuilding or physique, but bikini girls run test. Th- think about that. Th- th- I think don't even know about bodybuilding because, like, I don't think a girl like Ashley Jones is running test. I just think I don't think maybe the girl that got second to Andrea might be, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but again, <laughs> if you if you got genetics like Shanique Grant. Shit, I mean, I, I don't know what if you need. I, I don't know if, you, if she needs anything. She might take fucking a sarm or some shit. I don't fucking know. What right, she wants. exactly, but, exactly. But I mean, you, you can get rid of TRT. But, you know what I'm saying? Like if it's a low, super low dose of monitor TRT. I, I feel like that, Brady. That's a good point. That's where a lot of these girls mess up. Is they'll they'll actually again feedback from from clients, but they'll they'll miss they mess up their doses. They're doing like oh, one, one or two it, lines too much, and that's the difference of verilization. Well, eight milligrams isn't that much. Yeah. 
Like, that's what I do at my HGH. I just go up a little bit. I'm like, oh, that's too many lines, puppy. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> but that, like, as a coach, that makes me nervous. Like, now, there, there, there are bikini girls that are on TRT, let's say. Oh, not even bikini, not even competitive. It's just women who are want to be healthy, right? And, you know, they're, they're very feminine. There's no no side effects. Me personally, I, I wouldn't be able to, to tell a female client, let's take, even if it's, I don't know, 50 milligrams. I just I, I just can't get myself to do it. Uh, I just Me can't. personally, I tell my women client, I will, I will not. Like, if, if you want to take testosterone and that's what your doctor's telling you, just follow your doctors. I'll do your diet and training. You can run your, your cycle. Because I don't have no uh, background or PhD or none of that to prescribe anybody testosterone. Neither do I have like cream open and all that other shit, but I have the experience of with what I've used. So therefore I can pass down my knowledge. I'm not touch test or trend. Therefore, what the fuck do I look like telling someone to use it? hundred percent, hundred percent, you know? And oh, okay. So I, I have a bikini girl that's three weeks out right now. And she, the only thing she's taking is clan and T3, right? Well, uh, she might take uh, a Novadex like the last two weeks. Let's say that, and she looks the part. She she might she might win the show, and this is her first show ever. She's not a bodybuilder. She she would this is for fun, and she might actually win the show. So in my head, I'm like, I don't I don't think for for bikini at least. I just don't think I think okay. She's also been with me for the last I don't know six years. I think people want to, some of these bikini girls, they get in the sport and they want to win, win a show in the next six months. Oh, yeah. Well, if you want to expedite this shit from six years to six months, then I think that's why they feel like they need certain things. But she's been training balls to the wall for the last six years. Well, then, yeah, that's why she has enough muscle for the division. But I, I think they want to expedite something that doesn't need to be expedited because it's not a crazy amount of muscle to begin with. You know, you could do it. You just don't want to take take the years right nobody wants to take a year when they could do it in a month i guess you know but it is what it is you know all right let's do uh one more question it's like a prerequisite for uh getting into bikini competition it's like all right i'm i'm gonna take this to the next level let's order some anivore and some clan yeah <laughs> to be honest <laughs> we we didn't even talk about any supplementation till like four weeks out she hit like a crazy plateau well, no, but maybe like five or six weeks out. She hit like a hard plateau. And I was like, damn, I'm carb cycling. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I'm like, okay. She's at that point where her body is really fighting back. I'm like, hey, I don't know if, you, if you're down uh, open to trying something called clan. She said, I trust you. So uh, I trust that you're not going to give me something that's going to you know, harm me. And I was like, perfect. So we started, we started clan, you know. But we literally didn't even speak about any of this. You know, she, she she is aware that this goes on in bodybuilding. She's not she's not somebody who's unaware. She's aware, but she it didn't she didn't mention it. I didn't mention it. I didn't see the need to. She didn't see the need to. You know, so I think you could. You know, you don't need all that so all the time. All right, one more question. Y'all want a lifestyle question or a bodybuilding question? Lifestyle. Yeah, I'm kind of tired of speaking about bodybuilding. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, current favorite TV shows. Do, do y'all watch TV? Stu, I don't think Stu watches TV. Do you watch TV? WWE, Monday Night Raw, Friday Night SmackDown. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I haven't watched that in a long time. I haven't watched wrestling in some, quite some time. It's about I've to been, move to uh, Netflix. It's moving to Netflix in January. Oh, okay. Oh, there you go. Uh, I like Penguin. Penguin been dope. I saw like two episodes, I think. Penguin is fire. <clears throat> um, I, I, don't judge me, but I, I, I did. I did watch Love Is Blind. I didn't watch the new season. But <laughs> I, I watched the last. Watch all that shit, bro. Uh, yeah, listen, and, 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 <laughs> so I was like, I guarantee you're just like me too, where you're like, I don't want to watch that, and then two oh, episodes in, you're like, no, nah, bro, I don't fuck with that dude. He's a lion. Yeah. Ass <laughs> Every single guy, same thing. I'm like. Oh, this is a really good show. I'm like, no, it's not. What are you fucking talking about? Get the, fuck just, uh, the Married at First Sight is the new one that she put me. Oh through. yeah, that's the one she's watching now. So I like, it's just a constant. I'm sure you guys, it's like you said, bro. You're going through. You're trying to pick something. It's like you're so tired of trying to pick a movie. It's like 
I just give up and I give her the reins and then I'm into it. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. but, like, but like usually like reality shows annoy me, right? So I'm like, oh, why would I watch this? But you keep walking when you go into the kitchen, you got your meal, you're like, wait, what happened? Oh, okay. <laughs> oh damn. And then next thing you know, you're like, yo, this is crazy. Like, what? Did he really say that? Oh no, nah, no way. And then you're fucking into it. And I, honestly, now I'm into it, you know. Um now if I have like a stressful day and I'm dieting and prep. Sometimes I don't I don't want to watch it then. I'm like, oh, this is too much drama for me. <laughs> but if I'm if I'm chilling, if I'm feeling good, I, 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 I you know, I, I might throw it on. I might throw some shit like that on. If I'm so that What's that? I was it's yeah. brainless to watch, you know. It's it like, is brainless, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah but, I watch cartoons on prep. That's my thing, but my girlfriend doesn't let me watch them. So Rick and Morty's my <laughs> shit. Well, cause you can't focus in prep. But I can't focus like Penguin. I like Penguin I'm the now. Opposite. I cannot focus really? off season. Yeah, I have. I just feel like I need to go do something or go somewhere with all this energy. And in oh. prep, I'm like, I need to go lay down and wait for my next meal. Like I'm like in jail. Mm. See, but in, okay. I just can't focus for shit right now. Well, now there's different phases of prep. I guess like let's say sixteen. 16 weeks to like eight weeks to like six yeah. weeks out. I'm good. My energy is actually up. I feel fucking phenomenal. But six weeks on, I can't, I can't, I can't even watch a TV show. I, I got to put on something brainless to just distract me and just sit there and eat my, eat my meal and then just lay down. Really, that's pretty much, you know, I was, I was of- hooked on a show for Texas Pro and I was watching the show backstage. <laughs> I was getting my tan Friday night. I was like, I need to get back to my room. Friday night SmackDown's <laughs> coming on at seven. <laughs> Damn. Hey, Stu, you don't watch anything. You, you don't have. You don't watch any shows, do you? Damn. Just a couple of YouTube channels, pretty religiously, like car yeah. stuff, but uh, not not really. Damn. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, what, what I about was listening movies? to your. I was listening to y'all's last podcast. It it was kind of funny. I don't know why it was, was kind of funny. That was a funny one. The one with Ken oh. and Joe, or, or yeah. Paul was on it. Yeah. I feel like I the whole episode was Yeah. <laughs> well, I feel like me, me, me and Joe can't take ourselves seriously. Anytime I see Joe at the gym, it's like, it's just like, just sarcasm and just the whole time. It's nonstop. We can't say one serious thing to each other. Like, I, just seeing him in the gym, it makes me laugh. I, I see Joe in the gym and I start laughing before he even says anything. <laughs> But I feel like I, I know he's gonna say something stupid, and then he knows I'm gonna say something stupid, and then it just it keeps going. All right, I think that's it. Unless y'all want to talk about uh, Matt Jansen some more. <laughs> that, that's what all the questions are, man. Is Matt Jansen this? Quentin this? Jansen? That, that, I don't even see Mike Van Wyck, just Jansen. So shout out Matt Jansen. Uh, wish you the best, bro. Team Mike Van Wyck. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> let's get Matt. Let's get Matt and Mike on the podcast. Let's do that. You like you just like controversy, bro. <laughs> no, I just, that's that's not, why. Hey, that's why you're a good podcast. So, so you should get you should get Quentin and Matt on the podcast. Okay, but but see, the way I think of it, I feel like we should be able to still talk to to sit down and talk, even if we don't like necessarily like agree with each other right i agree even if they storm yeah. off the podcast i agree entirely <laughs> yeah. well okay speaking about that I, I didn't watch it yet, but i saw the thumbnail um fuad had a uh, janicky on the podcast i'm like perfect because in my head i'm like instead of like like punching people in the gym about it let's talk let's talk about it you know right. like i, I feel like that would have been a great video mike van wick and uh jeff nipper talk about it you know it's okay it's okay to talk bro it's okay, it's okay, man. We we, we can talk. Throw parts, bro. We can just we can chat. <laughs> exactly, you know. So I, I, I want to see if Fouad and Janik are gonna argue, but kind of like Nipper, like Janik, but Janik is the nicest guy in the world. Like he's literally the, the nicest person ever. You know, um, anybody who meets him is like, bro, I I didn't like him, but now I'm like, this is the the the, the, the coolest person ever. I'm like, yeah, you gotta. Sometimes you gotta talk to people. You know, the content is. That probably enhanced the backlash too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, but content is not somebody's true character. It's just content. We just people just make content. So you gotta sit down sometimes and talk to people, and, and you'll be surprised. You guys are just, you just are more alike than you think. You know, so like Stu, I, I met Stu and Wyatt backstage. I'm like, 
They're like assholes. I don't want to talk to these motherfuckers. And you talk to them. Uh, I'm sorry, Sir. You and, you, you, and Wyatt, you and Wyatt, the, y'all don't look y'all don't look like nice people, bro. Like Please backstage, like, bro, I thought you hated me the whole like first year I knew you. I still yeah. think you hate me sometimes. Like. <laughs> it's just how they look. But then, but right. Stu was nice. He was he was handing out chocolates and shit to people. Yeah. You know, I'm like, I don't I don't <laughs> eat that shit, bro. I, I'm I'm not in shape, bro. <laughs> but <laughs> but yeah, I mean, the, the, so, <laughs> yeah, my my guy was fucked up. But I I fucking picked out. I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, um, <laughs> but they were the nicest people ever. I mean, even Brandon, I, I was Brandon. I was like Brandon. I don't, I don't like how the guy's walking around. Brandon was walking around like this and shit. I'm like, man, put your damn arms down, motherfucker. You know, <laughs> but, but Brandon is cool too. You know, so sometimes you just gotta talk to people. Everybody, look at everybody relax by day two because like always. everybody relaxes at finals. It's it's That's that true. like that all the pro shows too. Mind you, that was a super competitive, super heavyweight class. So you could see how everybody could be kind of like, what the fuck? Everybody, motherfuckers, big as shit, right? So everybody kind of like, you don't really want to talk when you feel like these motherfuckers all look crazy, right? So, you know, if you're walking in like, oh, this is easy, <laughs> you're going to be like, hey, what's up, bro? That's you know, but it, <laughs> nah, <that's laughs> no, so yeah, I mean, everybody, everybody was super cool. So just, just talk to people, man. It's okay. And and we don't we don't agree on everything. Me and Ken argue all the fucking time. Right here on the fucking podcast, we argue. You know, me me, me and Stu disagree online. It's not. Well, it's not I have your thing. back. I have your back, baby. Thank you. Yeah. See, I'll go to war for you. So even if you're yeah, wrong, mine. <laughs> <laughs> Likewise, Alyssa. You know, well, I, everybody everybody has these disagreements. That, that 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 doesn't mean we can't we can't be friends or even cordial. Uh, me and Paul, be, 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 everybody disagree everybody to know. agree, disagree to exactly. agree, or agree to, agree to disagree. Sorry, <laughs> agree to disagree. You know, so <laughs> shit. All right, y'all. Okay, let's uh, let's uh, podcast. This podcast episode is why can't we be friends? Yeah, exactly. You know. <laughs> so hey, stay tuned for the next episode. We're gonna have Jansen, Mike Van Wick, and uh, and Quint, Quint, <laughs> and Quint, yeah. Oh no, or oh, Jeff Nipper too. So. And Nick, yeah, we have Nick too. <laughs> it's gonna be a good one. Stay tuned, y'all. All right, y'all. all right. Take care, y'all. Later.